Hello everybody. Hopefully this video might ha help somebody. It's about um, speedos, Indian speedos. We all know what junk they are. Right, okay, well I've got both my bullets here. Well, 350s anyway. Um, I've just put a new speedo on this one because I robbed the speedo off of this one to put in that one because that one died. Um, yes, this works a treat. Now, I'm going to try and tell you how you can spot good ones and bad ones. There is a difference. Um, let me just show you the old speedo that I took off this one. That's the new speedo that I put in a week ago. And this is the speedo that I took out. Now, they look identical, don't they? They're 80 mile an hour Smith replicas. Now this one, that's the mileage I managed to get on it before it died. <laughs> what it actually did, I thought it's taking forever to get any miles on the clock. And I'm thinking, oh no, this must be running slow. So I thought, well, okay. And then, then, then the speed start. I couldn't get anything over 40 mile an hour on the speed and I knew I was going faster than that. <coughs> So I thought, well, it's to Felixstowe from here is exactly eight miles. To a certain point in Felixstowe, it's exactly eight miles. So I took the mileage off this one and headed off to Felixstowe, and it registered six miles. So that 8,000 miles is probably a lot more than that. And I thought, anyway, it's time to get another speedo. Um, now, I pinched the speedo out of this one, which is now in here, because this one was really good. This one used to flap about, uh, jump between 40 and 50 and 30, it just swing about wildly, you know, it was just not very good. But this one didn't. And that's because the needles in these ones are not damped. Uh, if you put a bit of cable in the back of it, a bit of speedo cable, in an electric drill and start it up, yeah, it'll go up and it'll still waver and flap about. But when you turn the drill off, it goes just straight back down to naught. These ones don't. They've got a damped needle in them. So you spin them up and they climb up, climb up, climb up to whatever speed the drill's going. And when you turn it off, it goes down really nice and slowly. And I thought, well, how can you spot the, the good ones? Well, there is a difference, and I'm going to point it out to you. If you look at the, the, the chronometric name, just above the miles, I don't know if you're going to get this in focus. Mm, probably not. Well, it's chronometric, and it's all one word. You can see it, chronometric, it's all one word. There's no gaps between any of the, the letters. But if you look at this one, it says chronometric. These are not very good for close-up, these, these GoPros. Um, there's a slight gap between the last O in chrono and then the M of metric. Now that's how you spot one with a damp needle. This one has got exactly the same. I'm sure it won't come out. I'm not seeing it on the screen, so. I'll, but it says chrono, and then there's a sh little gap, and then it says metric. Where this one, the junk ones, just say chronometric. So that's how you can tell. And a lot of the sellers, they take a sort of like a three-quarter view of it with a speedo like that. Can you see that green ring in there? That's another giveaway. They've got a green plastic ring in there. Um, I think this one's got it as well. No, I think I took it out of that one. But I've had to have them both to bits to get um, to put more mileage on. 
I put this mileage on, plus the 1500 miles that the bike had done when I bought it, and then I changed the speedo. So that mileage is now right. We're heading on to 10,000 now. And I've done the same with this one, but let me show you. 5273, well, the seven is between the six and the seven. I've got it one peg out on the dials. Um, so I'll, got, I'll just have to open it up again and just set that again, and then it'll be right. You don't always get them right first time. But this is the Speedo that originally came off this bike. And you can see the needles fell right off it. And if you put a cable in it, it spins around like a top. So with all the Speedos I've had in this, I've kept a note of all the mileage. Added them all up and then added it to this one as well. And I set that mileage at 5273. So uh, that's the, the true mileage of what this bike has done. And that's the true mileage of what this bike has done. I mean, if you, these are to replace, not this one, this is a factory one, but Royal Enfield don't make their own speedos. They get them made for them. And they're all much of a muchness. They all do, do the same thing. The cable drives up here, it's got a little worm on it, which drives that worm, which drives that gear on that shaft, which drives that worm, which turns that gear, which alters the mileage. So that's pretty set. Now to, to actually, when you open them up, this is what you get out of them. Not, not quite the same as this, because this has got tubes on it to direct the light from the bulbs for the high beam, the neutral, and the indicators, where these ones don't have any of that. It's just a speedo with an auto. So, um, to change to change the mileage, these are very slightly different. The, this type, um, those that, that the type on the bike there, haven't got that bar with the keepers in. They're locked into the gears on the on the drums. They've got little fingers that, that hit against the back of the face. And all you've got to do is just get a pen knife or use a Swiss Army knife. Put it in the gap. Just take the pressure off each drum so that the ratchets disengage and then you can turn the, the uh, numbers around. And you can set your mileage to whatever you want. Not saying that you should wind it back, you shouldn't do. But um, you can put the true mileage of the bike on. Because there's nothing worse than checking the MOT history of a bike, and it's done 2,000 miles on the first MOT. The next MOT, it's done 3,000 miles. The next MOT, it's done 400. And you think, yeah, what's going on here? But um, look at my bulb horn. Look, it's all gone all sticky in the sun. It's mate. It's the rubber's devulcanising it. I took it for the MOT, the MOT bloke said, I take it that does work. He didn't want to squeeze it, it'd get covered in, in sort of greasy stuff. I said, yeah, it works. So that passed. So yeah, just, you know, if these are to replace the chronometrics, uh, the original Smith's chronometrics. Um, if you want to pay between two and 400 pounds for an original Smith's chronometric, that's up to you but you won't get a new one you can only get second hand ones and I, d I have got original Smith's chronometrics and I just won't put them on at Indian bullets because it's just such a waste you know you know so I just use the Indian speedos but these are the best speedos that you can get in my book they, they're steady, really steady on the needle, they don't wave about, and uh, they are damped, so, which helps at that no end. And they're accurate, because I did, went to Felix Day with this one, and it did exactly eight miles, so I know the miles is right. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to, well, I don't know what to do with this one. Nothing really. You know, if, if you shake it, 
you can actually get the needle to move, look, flap about. You can't on these, they just stay exactly where they are. So I'm just telling you what I found out about them uh, through lots of experimentation and, and due diligence I've sorted out the, uh, the good ones from the bad ones. But you have to have that spacing, chrono, little tiny gap, metric. If it says chronometric with no gap, that would be a rubbish one. You might as well throw it in the bin right from the box, you know. I read somewhere on a forum, they said that Indian Speedos, that they come in two, two states. They're either brand new, pristine in the box, or they're completely and utterly worn out. And the, and the difference between the two is about three months, which isn't far out. Well, I managed to get six months out of this one. Um, it still looks like a proper speedo, but it's no good. It doesn't read right. So, uh, what else can I tell you? Um, these are just magnetic speedos. They're not. They're not chronometric. In in there, there's a cup, and uh, there's a disc that sits in there, which is fastened to the needle which is magnetised <clears throat> and it's just the magnetic force between the cup and the disc that makes it drag the needle around and why this one it went right around the clock and broke the needle right off it, and then the centre bit was just spinning like a top crazy anyway <clears throat> just another junk manufactured thing and it you know, if you're going to go to the trouble to make a speedo, at least make one that works for a while. Everybody else managed to do it, but the Indians don't seem to be able to master it, really. But there are good ones. The ones I've got now are the good ones. So, uh, uh, another little thing I wanted to just talk about. Condensation in the oil on the bullets. Just there, there's a pot. It's an, ev an evaporative, something to do with the emissions. And the breather from the gearbox, the top of the gearbox, goes to that pot. And the idea is that any oil mist will separate out in the, from the breather. And when you stop the engine, it will run back down the pipe and go back into the gearbox. Well, what actually happens in real life is on a cold start you'll get condensation in the oil you'll, then the oil starts to get hot and it boils off the the the, the uh, water is sort of well vapor really not steam but vapor the vapor then condenses in here when you turn the engine off the water that's in there drains back into the gearbox so you don't ever get rid of it so what i've done is i've pulled the pipe off that pot and I've just vented it down to the ground down there and what happens is it, 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 it does drip when you first start it up you know you're getting condensation even on a hot day you'll get condensation because the cases are a lot colder than the, the ambient temperature sort of thing really um, but I don't get I mean you used to take the take the oil filler off and it was like carnation milk in there Just to prove a point. No carnation milk. It's all boiled off and gone and dripped out of the uh, out of the breather. And you don't lose your oil, the oil stays in. So that that's what you've got to do to stop the condensation in the 350s. The 500s are not quite so prone to it. They, they, they do do it a little bit, it depends on how far you run them. And I've just done this one, I've only done 16 miles with it. <clears throat> I've just disconnected the breather on that one. And this will probably be a bit gungy till it, till it boils it off. Well, it's a lot better than it was. There's still some in there. You see it on the end of the stick there? But it's it's... It's nearly all gone. Nearly all gone. 
So that cures that. Yeah, you can see it, look. Horrible stuff. Because I had to do something with, with both of them because the weather we've had, it's been really hot, which means it boils the water off quicker, but it only goes into that pot and doesn't, um, doesn't get rid of it. It just drains back into the, the oil tank. And when I drain the, the oil out of this one, I got about a quarter of a cup full of water first before the oil started to run out of it and I thought that's not good. And um, it got in the oil galleries as well that where it sucks the oil up to pump uh, to the feed. They were full of water as well. And I thought I can't be doing with this, it's got a, it, it, I'm going to vent it out. And that's what I've done, I've vented both of them out. This one's vented down here as well. You can see the gunge that's coming out of it. That's just a tiny little bit of oil with water mixed in it. So that just vents out and uh, you're getting the water out of the system. So that's probably the best advice I'm offering on this video, isn't it? But I've tried everything. I've tried everything. Running different grade oils, it doesn't make any difference. So yeah. Anyway, I hope this video has been of some help to somebody. Um, but you know, don't don't buy the the. I mean, those Indian speedos are f between nine and fifteen quid. Forget them. These ones are a little bit more. But get your pictures up on eBay, and then enlarge them, and then you can look at that 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 name. And if it's got that little tiny gap, go for it. And then at a three quarter view, you'll see the green thing. They're the ones to get. They're about 24 quid, which is no, it's still no money, is it? If you're going to buy a speedo, just spend a little bit more and get a good one. So there you go. I mean, this doesn't just apply to Royal Enfields. It could be a Triumph, BSA, early Nortons. Anything that had a chronometric speedo is prone to this. So, yeah, that's my little video anyway for Sunday. Thought I'd better tell, tell you what I've found, what works and what doesn't. Yeah, so I'm starting to use this one a bit more now. I haven't done many miles on this one at all really, but it's the best of weather now, but now I'm now working again, so I should be taking the old faithful one with the panniers and uh, I'll chuck it in the back of my van and go up there and uh, I should be commuting about 32 miles a day for a little while. So uh, anyway, yeah, that's it. I've run on a long, long enough now. So the scruffy and the good, the good, the bad and the ugly. Well, they're all good. It's just me that's ugly. You got a little puss cat. Want to say hello? Hello, puss. Hello. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. She's never far away. She's the Enfield cat. <coughs> okay, right. I'll see you on the next one. Bye, bye.